Welcome, welcome, welcome tonight to the Stage Left Cafe, a wonderful place to have a concert. And uh, I am absolutely thrilled that this concert is taking place. I think of it as a personal favor to me. Okay. Oh. Oh, my favorite, my favorite artist in the world is going to be playing right down the road for me, and this is fa fantastic. She's always been a fantastic singer. She's always been a fantastic writer, and her skills have only madly improved. I listen to her, her sound check, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be really good. So I'm not... I was just showing off for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to... I know it's funny to say, but I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Because what you want to hear is, is this woman right here. Thank you. So please make a good welcome to Claudia Schmidt. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> well, happy Poetry Month, everybody. Something to be happy about here. And I'm, I'm taking every opportunity that I can to commit poesy and... In fact, I'm going to begin with a, a, a wonderful piece that I encountered in the, the Washington Post style section a few years ago. There was a contest. Now, the idea of a poetry contest, I was talking with Jackie earlier, seems about as, oxy, it seems about as oxymoronic as a dulcimer contest, you know, a poetry contest. It just doesn't seem right. But this was, the challenge was to take um, a poem, any poem, and rewrite it as William Shakespeare might have written it. And so this was the winning entry, who's, I think the guy's name was Jeff Brecklin, who, uh, remember our beloved Hokey Pokey? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, proud left foot that ventures quick within, then soon upon a backward journey live. Anon, once more the gesture, then begin, command sinistral pedestal to rise. Commence thou then the fervid hokey poke, a mad gyration hips in wanton swirl, to spin a wild release from heaven's yoke. Blessed dervish, surely canst go, girl. The hoke, the poke, banish now thy doubt. Verily, verily, I say, tis what it's all. Ah. Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. Everyone must change. No one stays the same. The young become the old. Mysteries do unfold. That's the way of time. Nothing and no one remain unchanged. The winter turns to spring. And wounded must heal never much too soon nothing and no one remain unchanged there are not many things in life you can be sure Except rain falls from the clouds, yes it does, and sunlight fills the sky, yes it does, and hummingbirds, sweet little hummingbirds, do fly. Thank you. 
Terry Tempest Williams said this. Once upon a time, when women were birds, it was understood that to sing at dawn and to sing at dusk was to heal the world through joy. The birds remember what we have forgotten. That the world was meant to be celebrated. This little room is full of yearning hearts. Open the door that keeps us far apart. Let in the light to guide us on our way into this day. Into this day. Well, you'll notice that between not uh, all, but some of the lines of that verse is a little space about the same length as the line I sang just before it. It's my fervent hope that when I sing that verse again and I sing that line with the space afterward that you'll fill in that space by repeating the line. I'm feeling optimistic. This little room is full of your talking about <laughs> I still um, am totally not taking for granted I don't think I ever did even before what I just now refer to as the thing which will be mentioned throughout the evening intermittently but but to come back to being together in a room again after that uh, that time of lockdown was the most amazing somebody described it as um, a, a collective effervescence 
that they rediscovered the first time they were in a room with people experiencing art again of, of any sort. Um, but right before that, that lockdown, I, I put out a brand new recording just in time. Um, good, always a great, a great marketer, brilliant marketer. And um, so um, <clears throat> I'm going to play the title song from that, uh, from that recording because it, it, it's based on a true story. A lot of my songs aren't necessarily, but this one had to do with an actual accident that I had. Um, uh, I dropped a large piece of dense oak firewood on the top of my foot. And I'm not one to go on about injuries or anything, but I found myself in the ER and, and I don't suggest the ER to going to the ER uh, to write, to be inspired and write poetry or songs, but that was where I found myself. Hey, all right. So um, I'm lying there for a very long time waiting. Waiting. And um, yeah. Yeah, it's not the living room, it's not the dying room, it's the waiting room. And then the door opened, finally, and uh, swung open and in walks a woman. She didn't say a word to me, she didn't really even look at me, but she had a white coat and a stethoscope, so I suspected she was a doctor. And she walked up to me, and she put her stethoscope on my chest, and only then she looked at me and said, you have a slow, steady heart. And then she turned around and walked out of the room, pulled the door closed behind her. I mean, if my husband, Mark, hadn't been with me, I would have thought I dreamed the whole thing, you know? Did that just happen? Yep, it happened. So I could have done, I could have, I had a couple of options at that point, you know? I could have, I could have reacted, well, the way people tend to react in our culture right now. I, I could have, like, I could have thrown it down, man. I could have gotten really vitriolic. I could have looked right at her and said, well, guess what, lady? That's not what I'm here for. <laughs> In which case, I would have written a very different song. <laughs> and the one I'm going to play for you. Because the option I chose was to just remain calmly on the gurney and think to myself, really? Me? Wow. And so this song got written instead. Slow, steady. lady doctor said to me when I showed up for an emergency it was a pretty nasty injury with pain and swelling I could feel and see ah but what I to have a steady heart when our whole world seems to be falling apart what does it mean that it is beating slow despite the pain and everything I know oh it's a mighty mystery Slow, 
not prepared us for The very news to make our spirits soar Well, here's breaking news for free I have a slow, steady heart My swollen foot will take some time to heal let you know, uh, I love it when a song takes on a function after it's been written. Writing the song is great and singing it, but when it takes on a function, man. <laughs> and uh, three or four different friends have told me that um, they put that song on their playlist when they were going into the hospital for some kind of cardiac procedure. Uh -huh. So feel free. It's there. <laughs> yeah, it's out there. <laughs> well, so then that lockdown happened, man, and uh, we were... We were uh, just talking with somebody about how we really, it, it, people, it's like they're, I don't know, are people trying to forget what it was like, or is it just that we tend to move on, we have this cultural amnesia, you know, we're the, gold, the goldfish, well, I've never been here before, <laughs> never been here before, <laughs> and, and um, but I, I remember really clearly that first little time when nobody knew anything about anything, and we were just so terrified, and we, did, we thought it was surfaces. We were, we were scrubbing our groceries and um, leaving them in the hallway for a while, and, uh, and we were to never, ever touch our faces ever again, and one, one friend of mine said, oh, God, I never thought my hands would consume more alcohol than my mouth, <laughs> and... And, th and there we were like, eh. And, and uh, in the middle of this, I'm reaching for my beloved's face, and he said, don't touch my face. And I went, huh? And then I realized he, w he wasn't really kidding. It was a, kind of an awkward moment, you know? Because that's where we were. And, and I, and I kind of went, huh? And I went away. And um, I went to bed that night. And I was waking up in the middle of the night with th these kind of fever dreams with things going on. I was just in, normally I would try to go back to sleep because I'd be going somewhere the next day, but I wasn't going anywhere the next day, so what the hell, I'd get up and I'd, I'd just go with it. And um, I wrote these words down and I thought, um, it was a poem. And the next morning over coffee, I realized, oh my God, no, this is a tango. And it was inspired by those words from the day before. So this is a little song about, about lust in the time of COVID called the Don't Touch My Face Tango. <laughs> Her hands commence their dance with mischief, art, and grace. Just don't touch my face. That's your line. Just. Ah, you've the power to melt my heart with just one longing look. Your 50 movies wrapped in one, you're better than the book. You whisper in my ear, and I'm beyond all time and just ah, don't touch in my face. I see you reaching. Don't touch in my face. I am beseeching you can touch me almost any place. Just don't touch my face. Your sweet incendiary. 
apiary And I tremble when you're near You never fail to thrill me With your beauty, wit, and cheer You're moving close I'm helpless now My blood, my passion, race Just don't touch my face Don't touch my face Oh, darling Please don't touch my face I'm going to do another love song here. <laughs> and this is a song I would have never written if I hadn't been um, under a deadline uh, to write it. I was out in Oregon and got a phone call from somebody back in Minnesota who gave, did this whole rundown. Yeah, we're doing this movie about this older couple and, and they're renewing their vows and they need a song and it has to be this sweet love song and we thought you should be the person to write it. So what do you say? And, and what do you say when you're self-employed person who, and somebody calls you to do something, you go, yeah, of course. And I said, when do you need it? They said, next week. <laughs> so I went, okay. And, and uh, the muse was with me. And the next day, this, this uh, song kind of came, came down, entered into my life. And I showed up a week later with my song, my new little song. And I thought we were going to be recording it for the movie. And it turns out I was actually in the movie singing the song in the final scene. I'd never really... Uh, they never really laid all that out for me. So then suddenly I'm going, well, gosh, I wonder if I know this song. You know, you write a new song and you have to learn it just like anybody else's song. But there I was. I was out on stage singing to this couple as they're dancing and the, and the friends who are in the audience, the extras are watching and the, and the lights are going to be going down. And, and, um, and so I start singing the song and I'm, my brain sort of bifurcates and, and part of me is going, okay, what's that next line now? And then the other part's going, oh, God, I hope this song doesn't suck. Because that's the other thing about a new song. You don't really know. And, and I'm, so I'm going, and, I'm, and I, 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 at one point I look at the main actress who's dancing in the couple, and she's crying. And I, and I see a couple people in the audience crying, and part of my brain goes, oh, this song really sucks. They're crying. And, <laughs> and, and then I, I got through the song miraculously without blowing any words and a couple of women ran up afterward and said, oh, I want that song for my daughter's wedding. And again, it was like, oh, this song already has a function, and I don't even know it yet. <laughs> it, was, it was a great moment. Um, and, um, and so uh, it was, so, and I never, like I say, would have had written it. What's the um, great quote from George Bernard Shaw? I love deadlines. I love the sound they make as they go whooshing by. <laughs> and um, so it was, it was fortunate, and I have to say that... Um, I couldn't have written the song um, if I hadn't recently fallen deeply in love myself. And so I had a lot of uh, material to mine for this, for this song. Ooh, 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 ooh. Today I'll take your hand in mine Make a promise to entwine my life with yours Day. It's always done that way As long as lovers seek to be Together till they cease to be So let me say most gratefully That here with you is home to me My dear, I thank the heavens above For sending me this timeless love Yet somehow so small Against a life of ebb and flow Of places yet to know Our joy and tears will light the way Our trust will turn our night to day So let
let me say most gratefully that here with you is home to me. My dear, I thank the heavens above for sending me this timeless Shining on our timeless love. Timeless love. Thank you. So uh, we just came through uh, Women's History Month, to National Poetry Month. I, I found out uh, when I was still living in Michigan that we, we share that month. It's also March is also National Frozen Foods Month. I, I found that out because I was driving through Grand Rapids, Michigan, and there was a billboard about, uh, about National Frozen Foods Month. And not so much about women's history, but it doesn't matter. It's too late to send your cards now anyway. You're going to have to wait till next year. For, Happy Frozen Food Month. Um, but being that I thought about that in Grand Rapids uh, made me think of this song because um, I, there, there was this wonderful venue in Grand Rapids. I th it's still there, I think, um, called the Ladies Literary Club. When I saw the Woodstock Opera House, I sort of thought of, of the Ladies Literary Club. Um, it's this beautiful old venue that's been well kept over the years and... Um, and, and for a while, this community radio station was doing all its concerts there. And so I show up, and I mean, I mean, you walk into the lobby, and I mean, this place is heavy. I mean, and there's this huge stained glass window called the Shakespeare window, and, and it's, the, it's, the, it's the moment of Portia leaning out the window and saying, who chooses me must give and hazard all he hath. And that's just the lobby, man. You go into the, into the main body of the theater, and it's all these murals of the story of Psyche. I mean, whoo, it was an amazing place. So I'm in the back room before the gig, the green room, and, which is, was totally well kept because the ladies had kept it so. And I was looking at all the photographs of the ladies um, over time, uh, past presidents and officers. And, and this was in the, and when I first went there, it was in the 80s, and I was in my super-duper angry feminist phase. And so I was really easily ticked off. And I was, su I was very annoyed suddenly because underneath all of these beautiful, you know, very strong-faced women were these names, like Mrs. Guy, Mrs. Dude. You, you know, you get the idea. And so I'm looking and I'm looking and suddenly there's this one photograph of this really beautiful woman, kind of more sepia-toned little, and it was it's like there were secrets there. And, um, and underneath that photo it said, Miss Eulalia Thomas. And I was instantly in love. <laughs> and I got pulled out on stage to do my concert and <clears throat> I drove off down the road and thought that was it. But Miss Eulalia proceeded to haunt me for the next few months until I finally wrote this song in her honor and all of the women who have inspired the rest of us along the way. Miss Eulalia Thomas, your face upon this wall, gazing outward upon us, you beckon and enthrall. You lay me up, you make me smile, you have a style all your own. All your literary sisters cast away their names, only known as Mrs. Mr. Walter, Frank, and James. heart that's free and alone, all alone. Were 
you're wealthy We are hearty, stealthy Beautiful without a doubt All the others smile straight on You come at me carefully Dreams in your eyes Never quite caught Your chin so strong them for a time Were their lovers children, critics husbands in your prime How did you fit out, fit it in mystery Eulalia You let me know I'm free to grow as I wish I will Miss Eulalia Thomas Your face upon this wall Miss Eulalia Thomas You're smiling for us happening in Delsimer world. <laughs> Jackie, in reminding me about first hearing me play and uh, play that song, Dulcimer, I had not been playing the Dulcimer for very long. And um, in fact, I still had the Dulcimer I've, I'd seen hanging on a wall in Herb David's music store in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I think it was made of plywood or something. It was pretty pretty bad. Um, I can't believe y'all put up with me banging away on it until I, until I got a, a prettier dulcimer down the road, but... And I got it. I, as far as I know, they were from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I didn't know anything about the history of the Appalachian Mountain Dulcimer at that point. I was just, in, I was just attracted to the shape of it, you know? <gasps> it was just so... Compared to my big honking 12-string, you know? It was just so delicate. And, and so... Uh, my uh, Appalachian Mountain Dulcimer was built in the mountains of Green Bay, Wisconsin in <laughs> 1978, where I was living at the time by a dear friend. And uh, it's still in the same dulcimer I'm, I'm playing now. And it just has a certain way of speaking um, that is different from the guitar, and it makes me think in a different way and sing in a different way. And um, so it's part of the team. Dulcimer's part of the team. Uh, and I can't imagine... Uh, not having both instruments with me. You know, when people say, which one do you like the most? And I, oh, it goes kind of back and forth, you know. I'll, I'll fall in love with the dulcimer for a while and then the 12 string. And it's nice. It's nice to have the variety. And I'm going to stay in the, um, in the women's, uh, in the women's sensibility uh, section here um, and do a song that I learned from uh, Neil Hagberg um, when Sally Rogers and I were getting ready to make our our um, record celebrating 40 years of singing together it came out in 2016. And um, we were finding songs, bringing our own songs. And this song was written by Neil Hagberg from Minneapolis. He and his wife, Leandra, Neil and Leandra, had a duo for many years. And um, a friend sat me down and said, you have to hear this song. And I had never heard the song. And I, both of us sat there just crying at the end of it. And I went, that's got to be on the record. Um, and... It's, we're, we're going through all these struggles now um, around women and girls. I mean, I'm thinking about, well, last fall, um, Narjis Mohammadi in Iran got the Nobel Prize for her work with women and girls in Iran, and, and she's in prison in Iran for, for exactly that. Um, and her big concern, I heard an interview with her, was that uh, her children, she was going to let her children down by being, not being available. And guess what? Her kids showed up and accepted the award and, and talked about how proud they were of her. And, um, and so there's that. And then now, just a couple days ago on this drive, I heard that in Afghanistan, they've reinstated stoning uh, women for adultery. Uh, that fine old thing has come back. Um, and then what we've got going right here in our own, in our own country. Um, it's, it's terrible, and it's ridiculous. And I love, I love the, that a man wrote this song. It gives me hope. And it's got a beautiful chorus in it. 
Star Girls. All of the girls whose names will never be known All of the girls whose choices were not their own All of the girls deny their share of the gold All of the girls like cattle bought and sold All of the girls who had to submit to a man all of the girls the boys could not understand All of the girls whose place at the table was barred All of the girls who number more than stars This is for you, I see you shine Sparkling like jewels in the night wherever I go Whatever I do, stardust in me is from you. All of the girls who could not tear the veil, all of the girls who tried and tried but failed, all of the girls who did not have their say, and the holy writers took their words away. This is for you, see you shine, I see you shine, sparkling like jewels in the night, sparkling like jewels in the night, wherever I go, whatever I do, whatever I do, stardust in me is from you, stardust in me is from you. All of the girls who raised their children up well All of the girls who rose each time they fell All of the girls who worked for the coming new day All of the girls who knew the price they'd pay All of the girls who somehow still kept the faith that all of their girls would find a much better way you are the stars you are the stars without words no i believe that someday your voice will be heard this is for you i see you shine i see you shine sparkling like jewels in the night wherever i go whatever i do Stardust in me is from you. Oh, the stardust in me is from you. Here's another star girl, specifically star girl, and um, I'm happy to say uh, that more is being spoken of her and learned about her now than for centuries. And I'm talking about Hypatia of Alexandria. How many of you know about Hypatia of Alexandria? She, she should be at least as famous as Cleopatra, for gosh sakes. And um, she taught at the Library of Alexandria. Um, she was brilliant, a mathematician, astronomer, philosopher. She had many, many students. People came from far and near to hear what she had to say. She would gather together huge crowds to hear what she had to say. This is very unusual for a woman in those times. And um, she was raised by her dad, who let her learn like a boy, and she, and she took to it big time. Nobody knows exactly when she was born, mid to late 300 A.D., we, we know exactly when she died, 415 A.D., because she was killed by an angry mob. 
um, and that were pulled together by a, a jealous bishop. It's a whole wild story. She'd been living this fine life. Um, I only found out about her because of a novel called Flow Down Like Silver, okay, uh, Kai Longfellow. It's a beautiful, and of course it's a, a novel, so most of it's made up, but otherwise it would have been a really short book because when I, when I Googled her the first time, I, there was some stuff, and it's put out by the Catholic Church. Watch out. And they didn't say much. <laughs> and mostly what they said, the thing they made the biggest deal about was that she lived and died a virgin. That, was, that seemed to be the most important thing to them. The book never mentioned that. The book, the book fleshes out this beautiful life for her that she had before this time when this bishop came in and looked at this woman attracting huge crowds of people and decided she must be a witch. Um, she was way, way worse than a witch. She was a scientist. <laughs> and um, anyway, that was the end of Hypatia. And, 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 and uh, you know, philosophers have busts of her in their, in their classrooms and things. But, but now people are talking about her more. And, and more, some letters from um, uh, one of her students and that, that had been somehow saved. And, um, and uh, there's a children's book out about her. I ran into a woman recently who actually named her daughter Hypatia. I was so happy. Out of, and, and she heard my song. I felt like I participated somehow in the naming of her child. And um, so I was so inspired by the novel and finding out that this woman had existed. And, you know, it's just like what's happening with these hidden figures, the, the amount of women that have contributed to civilization that we're just starting to find out about who are getting faces and names, and it's exciting. So this is uh, for her and all these other hidden figures who are becoming unhidden. And uh, also... Uh, based on the novel, so most of it's made up, but otherwise it would have been a short song. Shorter than the introduction. <laughs> this is called Hypatia of Alexandria. What's got a part for you in it? There once was a gal named Hypatia. She'd beat you in spades if she raced you. She'd philosophize you to mere smithereens, but not in a way that disgraced ya. Here's your part. Hypatia! Try that. Hypatia! Yeah. Hypatia was smarter than you are. In math and in science, a rock star. No women nor men who ever had been could exceed her in all knowledge thus far. Here we go. Hypatia! Alexandria was in survival Smuggling books from the flames of revival They hid a whole library hoping to glean A culture none other could rival Come on! Hi, <laughs> Soon the Christians denounced her as pagan Just an uppity woman to rag on but so many citizens thought she was keen The powers it be had to wag on So they whispered that she was too damn proud Then they poisoned her pals in the royal crowd They cornered her cruelly and staged a mob scene With pottery shards and a voice loud Come on! I paid ya! <laughs> trying to kill me ah oh, they killed her for no earthly reason except some vile priests found it pleasing a sentiment that to this day is often seen on women it's still open season so here's to all the gals like hypatia it's high time that we truly embrace ya No longer forgotten or killed for your genes We must stop them before they debase ya Hypatia! Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful, brilliant Hypatia Some guys came along and replaced ya You're too soon forgotten, your slate was wiped clean The his in the history erased ya so now we must sing of her splendor To women and girls, though still tender For with knowledge we triumph and thwart the obscene And so in this way we befriend her Don't forget to remember Hypatia
<clears throat> well, I think I'll do one more song uh, this set. We'll have a, an intermission while we all try to find the bathrooms. And, um, and that's why I'm going to do this song. This seems like the, this be has become my go-to, uh, no pun intended, um, intermission song. And it's another, it's another one of my COVID hits, actually. Uh, it, was, um, it was inspired by the great toilet paper shortage, remember? Oh, yeah. mm. And uh, <clears throat> I, I went to bed and had one of my fever dreams and woke up in the morning and had this song. You'll, you'll uh, recognize the melody so you can help me out with it. Um, and so we'll have a break. I have my stuff over here. We'll get refreshed and we'll come back for um, another set. I'm going to be doing completely different songs next set just because I've been doing this for 50 years now. I can, I'm a professional. I won't repeat a song. So. <laughs> I know enough songs now. No, remember back when we were first starting out, it's like you only knew 12 songs. It's like, God, please don't let me get an encore. You know, so like, <laughs> I have to just start over again. <laughs> Bideo, Bideo, time has come and me got to go now. Bideo, Bideo, my Bideo, my Bideo, my Bideo, my Bideo. Time has come and me got to go now. Having a bidet is a pertinent issue. Time has come and me got to go now. Save me from hoarding too much toilet tissue. Time has come and me got to go now. It will provide some hygienic traction. Time has come and me got to go now. Clean as a whistle after peristaltic action. Time has come and me got to go now. Putting my money right in the bank. Time has come and me got to go now. Instead of pumping out my septic tank. Time has come and me got to go now. Bideo, bideo. Time has come and me got to go now. Bideo, Bidet, my bidet, my bidet, my bidet, my bidet. Oh, time has come and me got to go now. Fancy ones with dryers and multiple sprayers. Time has come and me got to go now. One simple nozzle is the answer to my prayers. Time has come and me got to go now. Hey, Mr. Tallyman, see my usage dwindle. Time has come and me got to go now. Whole paper roll instead of empty spindle. Time has come and me got to go now. One spritz, two spritz. Three spritz, four. Time has come and me got to go now. Rinse off the nozzle and she's ready for more. Time has come and me got to go now. Bideo, bideo. Time has come and me got to go now. Bideo, bideo. My bideo, my bideo, my bideo, my bideo. Time has come and me got to go now. All right. Thank you. Let me, uh, uh, let me interrupt this interruption with a special <laughs> announcement. The bathrooms that we had previously announced were closed are now open. Oh! So go for it, uh, get yourself some CDs, and we'll meet you right back here. It's a miracle. Hello, 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 everybody. Um, yes, it's Jackie talking to you again. Claudia Schmidt, remember her? Uh, she, has, she has tons of CDs and wonderful music for sale. She would love to tell you all about them, but right now she's going to do another fabulous set. And I think we all say a big yay. Here is... Claudia Schmidt, back again. Hey, I, I, I almost forgot to mention that this is the first stop on this little swing I'm doing over in Illinois and Michigan. And so I left my home 
to head over this way. This is my first gig. And I just want to say that here I am in Woodstock, Illinois, and I currently live in Woodstock, Connecticut. So I'm, it's like, I know it's, it's a little weird. And tomorrow I'm going to Woodstock, Wisconsin. No, just kidding. The all Woodstock tour. Uh, you could probably do that. There's probably, a, uh, there's probably towns in every, in every state. Um, <laughs> Well, um, somebody had mentioned this song, and I almost did it last set and lost track of it. Um, and it, it's been especially fun to do, looking back on, on this, uh, having, having done music for so many years now. And I actually, um, actually, I actually wrote it around my uh, 60th birthday. I'm 70 now. Um, I, I, be, I, became, I like to say I became, I like to say I became 70. I hear myself say I'm turning 70. It sounds like bad milk, you know? So... <laughs> Um, but around the time I became 60, I wrote this song. Um, and, uh, it was in, that's when it hit me how, how awful people are about getting older in this culture. Um, and, uh, it's like, uh, you know, they started seeing the black balloons and the, you know, the fifties is the new 30 and the blah, you know, Peter, my friend, Peter Berryman said, I guess that means dead is the new old, you know, things are just getting really <laughs> crazy. And so, um, but I was feeling pretty good actually about, about the whole thing, about getting that far and. And, and um, so I was having lunch with a friend, and we were talking about revisionist history of relationships. You know what I'm talking about? And, and I heard myself saying, well, yeah, well, you know, when you have letters and pictures and stuff, you have evidence of happiness. <laughs> and and uh, it was pretty snarky, and, um, but it was a good line. So the writer part of me kind of tucked it away, and, and, uh, and it found its way out ultimately into, into this song. Um, but I wanted to just proceed it with a little poem that I wrote I, in just a couple of days after I turned 60, but became 60, excuse me. Um, yeah, uh, I was on Beaver Island in, in one of my favorite places in the universe, and I was feeling pretty darn good, and um, it goes like this. This summer night has bidden me dispense with PJ finery. So uh, here I stand before the mirror to make assessments front and rear. A girl gone wide, but not too wide, and everything still works inside. My muscles still can do the job. My torso's not just one big blob. No, no nips, fake lips, or tummy tucks. No Botox perms or lipo sucks. So here I stand, undyed, undead. And now I think I'll go to bed. <laughs> These tears fall more easily than they ever did before And often unexpected things I don't question anymore Babies laughing, sweethearts kissing A drifter's lonely face Countless moments that sow the seeds of gratitude and grace these tears are the evidence of happiness. You can sing that with me. These tears are the evidence of happiness. Mm -hmm, happiness. These lines seem to be fighting for a spot upon my face. Each year before the mirror, more and more a map of place. They look just like the trip itself twists and turns in straightaways they show up mostly when I smile and I smile a lot these days these lines are the evidence of happiness oh these lines are the evidence of happiness mm, happiness No judge and no jury A lifetime of losses can be counted in a hurry In the court of law There's only me, you see And the evidence So much evidence This heart has been broken like the moon upon the sea by lover and by culture by my own inconstancy but this heart 
the song its way to joy and healed a thousand times. So scarred and ever tender, full of melody and rhymes. This heart is the evidence of happiness. This heart is the evidence of happiness. Mm, happiness. This life has not found its worth on the stairway to success. Reveling more in alleyways and scenic routes, I guess. The journey is spectacular and the company is the best. And I will travel fearlessly till I'm happily at rest. It's life is the evidence of happiness. This life is the evidence of happiness. This heart, this heart is the evidence. These lines, these lines are the evidence. These tears, these tears are the evidence of happiness. The evidence of happiness. Thank you. Well, a few years ago, I, I put together, um, it's the only kind of thematic, I guess, recording I've ever done, because um, people were asking me for years, so when are you going to do a holiday record? And, uh, and <clears throat> that kind of sums up my, my snark factor just kicked in there. <clears throat> I call her my inner snark. She like lives in there. Most of the time, she's benign, but when it get, kicks in, I can tell that she's, she's coming forth because my, my, uh, my lip involuntarily starts to curl up and I get a little twitch, you know. And <clears throat> so, but then I was thinking to myself, wait a minute, I love winter, and I love winter solstice, and why am I denying myself the pleasure of doing some music around a time of year that I love? And so, because what I'd said as a joke, the snark, Miss Snark, would say, well, if I ever do a holiday record, I'm going to call it Heart the Dark. <laughs> and so I did. <laughs> um, and uh, so I gathered together some uh, songs of mine and a, and a few classics along the way, um, and this thing I'm going to do um, was from a story that a dear friend of mine had written about a troubled wizard trying to, trying to reconcile all the different winter solstice celebrations and what they have in common. And he's having this deep dream, and he's dreaming about the ancient people dancing around the Yule log, and they ch are chanting. And so my friend made up this wonderful solstice chant, and I wanted to remember it. And the best way to remember things is to put a little melody to them. Um, <clears throat> so I said I'm going to play for you and have you sing with me. And then I'm going to go into a song that was inspired um, by John Lewis. Um, and I heard an interview that, um, that he did. It was on the eve of the 50th anniversary of the March from Selma. And so he was still alive, still kicking, <clears throat> and for several more years. But, so, but just to um, hear him tell that story, he, he was there as a 22-year-old young man got his head beaten in by the state troopers. And to hear him tell it in that, that I don't know, it's hard to describe his voice, like fierce and gentle, and, and he was a poet. So the way he described it, he talked about those state troopers on the other side of the bridge as like a sea of blue is how he described them. And I was sitting and listening to this interview on the radio just weeping, and, um, and it was another one of those songs that just came to me because it, what it, I thought about were, were those people on that bridge and, and how they started a walk that it's, it's up to us to finish, you know, together. Only together can we, like, turn that resistance around so that ultimately we're all walking toward justice and dignity and equal rights for every human being. Yes. So, um, so this song came in. <laughs> Thanks to John Lewis, beautiful John Lewis, who walked the walk until his last breath. And... Um, and, but I, so I'm going to do the chant, and it's a winter solstice chant, but it, it feels so appropriate to the time that we're in right now that I'm going to do it in, in that spirit because, again, it's, we're, we're dancing around that, that fire together and keeping each other buoyant. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's important that we retain buoyancy. Looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge until we turn them around. Started out peaceful just like they planned. 600 people walking hand in hand. Two by two, they made their way into that bloody fray. We're still on the bridge, 50 years gone by. Still on the bridge, looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge until we turn them around. Oh, oh, oh. Silent marchers, Montgomery bound. The right to vote, their common ground. Selma behind what lay ahead would leave three people dead. Come on, we're still on the bridge, 50 years gone by. Still on the bridge, looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge till we turn them around. Bridge and the angry blue sea at the bottom of the ridge. Old Edmund was a clansman, and here's the shame the bridge still bears his name. Oh, we're still on the bridge, 50 years gone by. Still on the bridge, looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge till we turn them around. Ooh, Selma. Montgomery can't be measured in miles, you see, but in the courage to stand our ground and turn this head around. Oh, we're still on the bridge, 50 years gone by, still on the bridge, looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge till we turn them around. Yeah, we're still walking, still on the bridge, 50 years gone by. On the bridge, looking hate in the eye. We can't cross the bridge till we turn him. No, we can't cross the bridge till we turn him. No, we can't cross the bridge till we turn him around. We can't cross the bridge till we turn him around. We can't cross the bridge, we gotta turn them around. Oh, we're gonna turn him around.
Well, I've been posting and other friends have been posting their, their spring birds coming into the feeders and coming into the decks. And um, I'm a bird lover and always have been. And one of the things I loved about the lockdown, I have to say personally, we were living in a very beautiful place in the country. And um, as a musician, I've been traveling my whole life. So I've almost never experienced an entire season from beginning to end. I would be there for part of it, I'd be gone. So to get to go that whole cycle was an extremely wonderful and sort of healing uh, experience for me. And, and, I, and it was for other people. I mean, reading about how, how people were you know, taking pictures of animals walking down the middle of streets because nobody was driving and birds building nests on mirrors on cars. And um, there was a sort of, um, I describe it as sort of a recovery of wonder during that time. I was, I was hoping it would last a little longer than it has. Um, it, was, it was really pretty amazing. Um, and, uh, and the thing with me and the birds is that the birds, um, you know, they all have their kind of general sound, you know, but I was around the birds and if it wasn't just like, oh yeah, there's a robin or there's a blue jay, it was like, oh, there's that robin <laughs> or there's that blue jay. Um, you know, they have their, they're little special sounds, especially at this time of year, you know? And um, so we, there was this cardinal the first summer. I, I will never forget this cardinal. I called it the mad Italian cardinal. <laughs> they would go, they would go, prego, prego, ha, 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 ha. That was, <laughs> honest to God, it was only this cardinal that sounded like this. It was fabulous. Um, and um, so uh, I went out early one morning, right around this time of year. We had Baltimore Orioles coming back, and this, this male oriole was singing its little everything out. And uh, it was so beautiful. It had its little theme all worked out. And I was just, I mean, if I'd been a female oriole, I was, I'd be like hubba hubba. I mean, I was. I wasn't an oriole, and I was going to hubba hubba. And it was something else. And so I, I, I stole that melody right, right off the bat and, and uh, turned it into this little sort of musical montage with that Baltimore Oriole. The thing is, I didn't even have to come up with a time signature because um, the Oriole was singing in waltz time. Oh. You know, I'm sure he got the girl. So this is, this is a Baltimore Oriole waltz. back to wonder for a minute. I was talking to a couple of guys recently at a concert who were high school teachers and, and they were lamenting the lack of affect of some of their students and realizing that so much of it has to do with spending no time outdoors. Um, how much nature uh, affects you that way. Um, you know, pushes that button, and they, the one of the teachers had actually come up with the condition he called wonder deficit disorder. Oh. Really interesting uh, to think about. Now, and, but I've, been, I've talked about wonder my whole life, and one of my early quotes in an interview was like, um, I had a low terminal wonder threshold, you know, uh, and, um, and that has remained thus to this day. And um, so I, I collect things that push that button for me. For instance, a friend of mine wrote a book 
a long time ago, and I don't even remember what the book was about, but there was a, a sentence about one of her characters that, that um, went, he was at the mercy of his astonishment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah never forget that one. And, uh, and then Mary Oliver, who talks about in one of her poems about, about wanting to be a bride to amazement. You know, that's just so great. And the one I saw recently was from Diane Ackerman, who said, wonder is the heaviest element of the, of the periodic table of the human heart because one moment can stop time. <laughs> Hop up on these wings of wonder, let us fly toward the sun. Deepest wells and highest mountains, we will know that all is one. Every creature winged and footed, every feature given free. There is no such thing as ugly when the heart can help the eyes see. Oh, oh, oh. Hop up on these wings of wonder, do not be afraid to fly. I have waited for this moment, do not hesitate to cry. Fear will only kill your longing, make you hope less than all. There is no such thing as fear when answering sweet mysteries call. Woo! Well, hop up on these wings of wonder while they linger, while they stay. They are strength and they are power, they are soaring night and day. Oh, such magic, they grow stronger with each song seen and known. They will not collapse or wither, though some people think they're all gone. No, no, no. Swings of wonder, there is room for everyone. Wonder struck and full of power, we can fly when work is done. Free the hand that holds it back, just reach on out and take it in. To be known as well as knowing is to live to learn again and again and again and again. Hop up on these wings of wonder, sing it with me. Hop up on these. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm going to hang out on the dulcimer for one more yeah. song here. I'm having a good time on the dulcimer. Sounds really beautiful in here, by the way. This is like it's just like some rooms really uh, pull out the. This is very special tonight, so I'm making the most of it. And thanks to Rich for doing the sound in here and getting this all together. This is such a lovely room. I came in here and I went, oh my god, I feel underdressed. So it's, like, it's really. Yeah, it's fantastic. So even better with, with all of you here in it. So I'm, <laughs> well, it's a symbiotic thing, isn't it? <laughs> so um, the, with the new record, Reimagining, I was talking to Jackie earlier about, about uh, going back to songs that I had recorded a long time ago. And a few of them I, I still do over the years, but several of them I'd sort of just let go of because other songs come in and there isn't you can't do them all um, and and a couple I'd recorded and uh, I just they didn't when I recorded them they were okay but they weren't kind of like they sounded in my head when I wrote them and so they were sort of easy to let go of and so there are a couple of songs in particular that when I I brought them into the the group of songs I wanted to do for reimagining so it's kind of a reunion you know um, and and the, the, everything came together so beautifully that I feel like, oh my God, I finally got it right, you know, after decades. And this is one of those songs. And, and it was actually, actually that woman who wrote the book with the great, he was at the mercy of his astonishment, friend of mine. She was the one who kind of indirectly inspired this song out of a, a, an actual experience we had. But I realized that the thing is you come back to a song after years away, and it's just like a, a friendship. I mean, you come with all these new experiences, and, and it becomes a completely different 
uh, a different kind of um, communication uh, between you and the song. It's, it's like a living entity for me. And this, is, this one's like that. And I, I sort of, I understood it on some esoteric level when I wrote it decades ago, but now I realize it's really a celebration of those friendships that <clears throat> exist totally out of linear time. Um, that they, they, like parallel universe sort of friendships you can just step into. It doesn't matter if you haven't seen the person for 30 years or 30 minutes or, um, th th it's just there. That space is always there. And, um, and it's, really, it's really sacred and wonderful and, and mysterious. And, and uh, so that's where this song came from. I didn't even understand it then, but now I do. So I can sing it with real gusto now. <laughs> Something that I long to hear Crush of noise And still I had a tender ear A sort of sigh A murmur Break of day I knew it could be Maybe for me I was seeking the quiet way Out to the fields The tall grass is bending low Toward a shape Stark against the morning's glow I moved in close You reached out as if to play My heart beating fast Sensing at last the path To the quiet way mm -hmm. You can have that with me It was your eyes Deeper than I dared to glance Then that smile Setting all the lights to dance A simple tune From your mouth I start to sway With your little song You took me along And showed me the quiet way In a room It's in the very heart of town It's waiting there When all the noise is bearing down When sleep is scarce And night has too much to say Remember this place And each shining face Who's shown you the quiet way I guess you might think, call this another song about friends. Again, it's a song that over time, um, I wrote it as a baby performer. <laughs> and then I had people asking me, they'd come up and they'd go, would you, would you do that song about your, your old boyfriend? <laughs> I would go, what? 
I, it's like, I don't do songs about old boyfriends. It's not my... And it took a while to finally figure out that um, this is the song they meant. And, and now for me, it's a, it, it's a song about our lost friends. I was walking through the broken glass last night and thought of you. Wondered where your reckless ways had brought you to. My memories of you whirled me back to boiling blood and wrath. And I wonder if you've stumbled on a lighter path. Did you go out to the desert with the sun hot overhead? Did the dry and the dusty heat make you wish you were dead? Or did the stark and the open spaces ease your urge to roam? Did it make you feel at last like you were home? Or did you go out to the woods where the silver poplars sing? Did the quiet rustling take away the city sting? Did the white birch Lightning strike the autumn glow you touch your heart with tenderness so you could grow And I was walking through the broken glass last night and thought of you wondered where your reckless ways brought you to Well it's a fiery mass way outside so you could rest Ooh. or did you go up to the mountains where the air is clear and cold and did they give you back your tears save you from growing old as your hands and your feet fought gravity all up the ancient wall I wonder, did you lose your ancient urge to fall? Oh, the last time I saw you, you were strung dangerously high. All your movements stiff and frightened, and you could not cry. Suspicious of an honest smile and looking for a fight. Lonesome streets, your home, your only friend the night. Mm. Now wherever you may be tonight, I hope you're pleased and calm. The air around you soothes you like a holy balm. Let your lonely anger as it turn your Sides inside out But you found a place Some of us still dream about When I was walking through the broken glass last night And thought of you And wondered where your reckless ways had brought you to blood wrath and I wonder if you've stumbled on a lighter path oh, I hope you have stumbled on a lighter That's kind of one of those songs that kind of went. You know, I've, I've described it in the past how I'll be going along and you have your, you know, try to put a set list together and you've, you've got your old, old songs that you want to get a couple of and then you've got your, your newer, older songs and you've got your older, newer songs and you've got your new, new songs and 
and, uh, and, and you're trying to get it all together, and you're in the middle of, God, I want to do that. And, and then you feel, it's like I feel a little tug at my trousers, you know? And, I look, and it, it's like I call it the prodigal song, you know? <laughs> and it's like down there going, so what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> That's how it is sometimes, these relationships with songs. There's this woman uh, named Trisha Hersey that I heard on the radio recently. Um, she was being interviewed. And um, she was a, a, an African-American woman, grew up in a family headed by a, a minister, father's a minister. Uh, everyone was driven to excel in the family and do well, which for an African-American family had to do twice as well in the culture. And the family did so, and she w ended up in seminary, and, and she discovered that she was... Well, well what happened is she, she, she just was like she was sick. She wasn't like sick, sick, but she was depressed, and she was crying all the time and tired, and um, she couldn't figure out what was going on. And, and she finally uh, just went with it. When she was tired, she would just go to sleep. We know if she was studying, it didn't matter. She'd put the book down and go to sleep and found out in the course of, of listening to her body that she started feeling a lot better. And she finished seminary. She went on with her life. Um, uh, and it, but it, it awakened her to the power this culture has to, um, to commandeer our very souls, um, to achieve, to produce and achieve. And... Um, and it turned into a, a movement for her because she's not, all, she's not only this brilliant um, seminarian, uh, she's also an artist and an activist. And so she started having these uh, nap ins where she had people come and, and like lie on cots and, and, they, and she would do kind of guided imagery visualization and they would sleep and they would cry. And, and the whole, so her whole thing has become, she calls it Rest as Resistance. And she's got a book by that same name and about how we need to reclaim um, our, ourselves, our very selves from, from the captains of industry and, and what, what are we doing all this for? What are we really doing this for? Um, and I just saw somebody on, online that post about, we have to quit talking about growth, we have to talk about what is enough, you know, what is enough? And um, so she, I actually was crying at the end of the interview because she, she said, this, is, this was like her, her, um, her manifesto is, um, we, each of us has a sacred and sovereign right to rest our bodies. <laughs> well, I have a song that I got to get to her. I wrote it several years ago. And the, the whole thing was around um, the idea of, well, getting really sick of hearing people answer when I would say, how are you? Just they would go busy. And I would wait. And they would say, busy, you know, busy. And I would wait for details. And they would you know, busy, I'm busy, busy. Busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I'm busy. After a while, it felt like people were just going, blah, blah, I'm busy, blah, blah, blah. And, and I mean, it was just, what is that? And then I got started thinking, what does that even mean? What is that? And, um, and then I, I went a little further and went, I, I tried a little experiment. When people would ask me, what have, what have you been up to? I, I would just say nothing. And I've tried that because people get kind of nervous when you say nothing. It's kind of a subversive word. This is not acceptable. Um, so I try to use that word as often as I can. And in fact, it's the title of this song, um, it's Nothing Slash Mental Health Day. Um, and uh, I, li I like to share a little uh, Spanish proverb that was on a birthday card someone gave me a few years ago that translates. Um, oh, uh, what a beautiful thing it is to do nothing and then to rest afterward. <laughs> There's a little thing I do at the beginning of each verse that goes... Now I know you're all very musical and beautiful singers, so my challenge to you is to just sit there and do nothing while I sing that part. And if you can't help yourself, lovely book to read Isn't it fantastic to be circumspect and tender, not a hero or a pretender to a throne I never asked for and I certainly don't need I will give them nothing and nothing is my name and Though they preen and posture they are not 
nothing just the same And I will cook some breakfast And I will feed the birds And I'll stay here the whole damn day Free of schedules, words, and words The world continues raging With its huddled masses thronging With its hunger and its longing Get a little closer to what passes for success and I am just a woman claiming nothing in this respite Though the tyrant and the despot never cease their greedy grabbing In their passion to possess And I will give them nothing and nothing's fine with me You can have your expectation, I will take my ecstasy hold a space for you it will be that nothing special only known by me and you too today I'm just a woman a woman claiming nothing 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 Uh, the song that I'm about to play is about exactly a year old. Um, and I was getting ready to go to a Pete Seeger sing-along that we do, that I'm missing because I'm on this trip actually this year called, called For Pete's Sake. It's a little, a few song leaders get together and we do a benefit for this food pantry in, in Woodstock, Connecticut. Um, and, um, and, and so uh, I was getting, I was working on Turn, Turn, Turn. That was my, one of my assignments and I'm working away. And I swear, it was, I felt like, like I had a tap on my shoulder and it was Pete himself kind of going, yeah, 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 you're doing fine with Turn, Turn, Turn. You got it. And kind of look over here. And, you know, I've talked with other friends who compose and write before. And we feel like we don't really s sit down and go, I'm going to write a song now. Um, and, and then we write a song. It's, it's almost like there's this constant flow of stuff. And we have the privilege and the opportunity to sort of reach in and, and pull some of it out and then, and then work it. Um, that's what it feels like. Um, in fact, I'm working on a song right now. I'm not ready to perform it yet, but this is ironic. I was up all night writing a lullaby. So <laughs> go figure, you know. Um, it's not quite there yet, but <clears throat> that's the way it works um, sometimes. But anyway, so that's what I felt like, like, like Pete, Got me, got, got me into the flow. And I started writing it, honest to God. I, I just, I didn't, I looked up and I had this song. And, and it was one of those things where I'd write a line and then I'd go, oh, and I'd write another line and I'd go, ha, ha, ha. And it was, it was like automatic writing. It was the wildest experience. And, and, um, and, and then I got to sing it. I got to run to the Pete Seeger thing that night and sing it for the first time. It was, it was, it was a christen there at Pete's sake. Um, and you know who it's for. Here's the chorus. Get your Bible off my body. Get your gun out of my face. Get your fear out of my joy. Your behavior's a disgrace. This delusion of oppression, it's a dangerous obsession. If you don't stop soon, I'm guessing you might end this human race. That's the chorus for next time. <laughs> Well, I'm so tired of sanctimony All your righteous rank baloney Screaming it's all to protect every precious child While gutting programs that would feed And teach the children now in need That's why your pusillanimous piety gets me riled So get your Bible off my body Get your gun out of my face Get your fear out of my joy Your behavior's a disgrace Get your fear out my joy, your behavior's a disgrace. This delusion of oppression is a dangerous obsession. If you don't stop soon, I'm guessing you might end the human race. This delusion of oppression.
lesson It's a dangerous obsession If you don't stop soon I'm guessing you might end this human race Now no one said that you can't pray Pray me to hell if that's your way But if I don't want to pray That's okay too Let's just let each other be Keep the dumb out of the free So freedom's just as good for me As it is for you So get your Bible off my body Get your gun out of my face Get your fear out of my joy Your behavior's a disgrace This delusion of oppression It's a dangerous obsession If you don't stop soon I'm guessing you might end this human race Your old crusade should take a bow It didn't work then, it won't work now You know a few bad actors just can't fool this crowd We are young and we are old We are woke and we won't be sold We shall live and love as nature and the Bill of Rights endowed So get your Bible off my body Get your gun out of my face Get your fear out of my joy Your behavior's a disgrace It's a dangerous obsession If you don't stop soon, I'm guessing You might end this human race You break the backs of the poor and needy And you break the banks with greed And you break the children's hearts With your love of guns When sweet Jesus said, let's break He didn't mean bullets for heaven's sake He meant bread and he meant love For each and every one disgrace well this delusion of oppression it's a dangerous obsession if you don't stop soon i'm guessing you might end this human race lay your weapons down unless you want to end this human race well it's hard time you learn the lesson from that song amazing already. It took me a while to figure out what to call it, but then it was like, oh, of course. Of course that's it. <laughs> and I do have that. I recorded that on, on uh, YouTube. It's on uh, my, my, my YouTube thing. So, yeah, feel free to learn it and pass it around right now. <laughs> it's that buoyancy thing, you know? <laughs> In fact, the song I want to leave you with tonight um, is another one of those songs. Um, because, I mean, you, obviously I love language. I love words. And and, I under, and language is just so important, and it's so powerful, and it's being used in such nefarious ways to, uh, to beat us down and to frighten us. And so whenever I find words that I feel like give us a kind of glow coat shield, you know, to, to, uh, to, to, keep, to keep it away, keep it away, then, uh, then I try to pass them on. And we, we were living in a 150-year-old schoolhouse um, at the time that the lockdown happened. Beautiful spot, and it had the original blackboards in it. It had different heights for the different age kids, in fact, still on the walls. And um, a friend had come to visit who was actually from Africa. And um, we took her around touring. We took her to this, this school that's nearby into the chapel. And she saw these words over a door. And she thought they were beautiful, and she'd copied them into her little book and brought them home. 
and, and picked up a piece of chalk and wrote, wrote them on her blackboard. And then she went on her way. And uh, we spent the next couple months just looking at these wonderful words, which neither of us had ever seen before. I've since learned that um, if you're an Episcopalian, you probably have heard these words often in benedictions, church services, or memorials, or, or graduations, that sort of a thing. It's a blessing sort of thing. But I didn't know that. I just was torn. I was just fascinated by these words. And one day, this melody kind of came in, and it came in like a madrigal sort of thing. And you know, as a singer, if you try to sing a madrigal alone, you can hurt yourself. You know, it's all <laughs> things all. So at that, at that time, I only lived a mile, uh, less than two miles from my friend Sally Rogers, and I called her up and I said, get over here quick before I hurt myself. <laughs> and she came over and we noodled it out and ended up recording it. So I'm going to pass it on to you. I'm going to sing it through and kind of line out what the, um, what the, what the madrigal parts are, and then, and then, then you just do anything you want. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, they're my favorite words. I, I say them every day, one way or another. If I don't sing them, I at least say them. And I just want to say what a treat it is to be in Woodstock, Illinois, here tonight with all of you, some of who, uh, whom I've known since I was a baby performer and you were baby performers and uh, Small Potatoes, you were one of my favorite duos, you know, it's just like I was always so charmed and, and, uh, and, and I just, it's, it's great. I, I love this. I love being here now and I love, I love the way I get to sort of look back it's, uh, at the same time. So thank you for that. We know that life... Oh, let me just say, these words were written in the late 1800s by a Swiss philosopher named Henri Frédéric Amiel. So, which makes me realize that t'was ever thus. Dear friends, we know that life is short and we do not have much time. Much time, much time, much time, much time, much time. Much time. Of those who travel with us, we sing that together. Of those who travel with us, so be swift, be swift to love, to love. So be swift, be swift to love, to love. Make haste to be kind. We sing that together. Make
Woodstock to Woodstock, love. Okay, okay, Jackie. Make it. Make it one more time. Then you can think, oh, these are great songs, and I'm going to go home and, and listen online and sort things out. However, if you buy them tonight, <laughs> Claudia gets all the money. <laughs> thanks so much for coming, and thanks to Rich for helping to set this up when I called him so many months ago. Yeah, and thank you to whoever it was that fixed the bathrooms. <laughs> thank, you, thank you to the people working back there behind the counter who have been uh, keeping us refreshed all night. And, um, and just thank you. <laughs> thank you.